Hi, I'm Sarah Smith, a horticulturalist here at Rogers Gardens, and in this video we're going to talk all about attracting hummingbirds to your garden, how to design your garden and plan for hummingbird action, and what kind of plants to pick. I'm going to show you a couple of my favorites, and we're going to talk about how to stage it out so you don't need to rely on a bunch of hummingbird feeders. Hummingbird feeders are great, they're super pretty. It is a big responsibility to keep them clean and keep them full, but you also want to have natural plants for them to come in that's what's going to draw them to your yard in the first place so let's get right into it when you have some of your plants picked out that you're gonna put in the garden make sure you have a couple of the same kind of plant you want to have patches it's gonna provide more nectar for the hummingbirds also hummingbirds can be a little bit aggressive if you've ever seen the hummingbirds we call them the chihuahuas of the bird world they like to fight each other so you want to make sure you have enough for them so they're not all fighting each other and getting territorial in the garden also design wise it just looks nicer to have multiples of the same kind of plant. Think in odd numbers, threes or fives. It just is gonna look a lot more pleasant to your eye as well. And thankfully, hummingbirds love beautiful plants. They like riots of color. They're not just all about red tubular shaped flowers. That's what a lot of people think that they want and they do, but they will go to a shocking amount of different plants of different colors. And the great thing is it will also attract butterflies as well. They like very similar flowers. So you'll have a lot of activity in your garden if you put some of these plants in there. The other thing when planting your garden is think about vertical space. You can do a lot of great vines that the hummingbirds love. You could do a lot of nice trees that the hummingbirds love as well. And you want to think about fuzzy kind of stuff. You want to have stuff in there that they can actually build their nests in. So you want to have things in there that they can pull like grasses and stuff like that to make their nests because if they're eating there, they probably want to have their babies there as well. And it's so fun to watch the hummingbirds nest in a garden. Their nests are so tiny and adorable and they usually have about two eggs in each nest. And it's really, really fun to watch the process of them grow and eventually get too big for that nest and leave and fly away. And then watch them come back those little babies that you watched grow up eat in your garden as well. And the last thing you want to think about is having some California natives in your garden if you live in California. So think about the native plants that the hummingbirds love as well. It's always really fun to watch them come up and eat from something that is a native plant. It seems a little bit magical to watch that interaction happen. So keeping all those things in mind, let's jump into some of my favorite plants that I like to have for hummingbirds. And I'm going to introduce them all to you and tell you a little bit how to take care of them and what their needs are as well so you can be really successful in your garden. So the first plant that I'm going to show you is Kufia. It's the plant planted here in this pot. All of the plants in this garden are all hummingbird attracting plants so, and you can see how beautiful the colors are. Kufia is a really great one because there's a lot of different varieties of Kufia. There's even one called Hummingbird Lunch which I think is really cute but they have a nice tubular flower depending on the variety and they really really enjoy these. They have a really great color. They come in a variety of colors as well so you can really find something that will fit your garden it's an easy plant full sun great in containers great in the ground doesn't require a lot of water once it really gets established so when you first plant things you want to make sure you're watering them a little bit extra to get those roots to kind of break out of that root ball shape that they were in when you put them in the ground and get into the surrounding soil but once they start doing that you can back off on the water a little bit the nice thing about this one is it's really really hassle free and blooms almost year round. So we get people who come in and they say, I want a plant that's easy, that blooms year round, uh, that I don't have to water a lot. This kind of fits that bill. It doesn't get too big. It doesn't require any kind of super specialty pruning. So if you're new to the garden world, you just want something easy. This is a super great plant. The hummingbirds are constantly on this plant, especially in the summertime, but it is one that has year round interest, which is perfect. This one here is Alstromeria. They call it Peruvian lily. This comes in a lot of different colors too. So of course hummingbirds love that red color, but they really like a lot of different colors as well. So you don't have to go with just red. We have oranges and reds planted in the garden here, but they come in whites, they come in purples. This makes for a really good cut flower too. It lasts a really long time in a vase. Uh, I always like to make sure I have plants in my garden that I can bring inside and enjoy as well. This one does die down and go a little bit dormant. So make sure you plan accordingly for that. When it's blooming and it's usually 
usually spring and summertime uh, and you will have foliage in the fall as well it's really really beautiful and really lush and super pretty it looks like it requires a lot of water but again once this one gets established it doesn't this one can take some shade so if you live in a hotter region make sure that you're giving it maybe some morning sun and some afternoon shading it doesn't want to get too hot so a lot of times people worry that in their gardens they have to have full sun for hummingbird plants and that's absolutely not true I'm going to show you a couple more that can take some shade next this is another great one to consider for some shade gardens again here where you're more coastal it can take some sun but if you're more inland this wants to be a little bit more shaded this is a butylon commonly called uh, flowering maple or Chinese lantern flower these can get pretty big so make sure you know which variety it is that you have because some can become full-on small trees but they're really really beautiful they have a really great foliage looks kind of like a maple leaf so that's why they call it flowering maple have a beautiful bell-shaped flower what I really like about this one is watching the hummingbirds eat from this is really kind of funny hummingbirds can fly backwards forwards they're really kind of great at maneuvering and they really have to kind of get up into these flowers so they kind of dive bomb up inside them to get to the nectar so it's really enjoyable to watch them eat out of these and if you have a more shady garden this is great it could be in shrub form it could be in small tree form here at Rogers we carry them in all the different kinds of shapes and forms and sizes they also come in a lot of really beautiful colors you can get white you can get pink uh, you can get all kinds of really beautiful flowers of course they like those oranges and reds as we've been talking about but they'll go to all the different colors as well so this is a great one for shady gardens fuchsias also work really well hanging basket fuchsias in pots as well so that will be a great one to have in a shade garden as well so you can always have hummingbirds in your garden regardless of you having full sun or having shade or a combo of both the next plant will kind of surprise you these are succulents and there is a lot of really beautiful flowering succulents especially all the echeverias and ioniums this is an echeveria hummingbirds love it so if you're dealing with the opposite problem and you have a really full sun space and you want something very very low water this is a really great one very easy plants perfect in containers but they really love the flowers once these bloom open they have a nice tubular flower we have a whole area where we have all the succulents together and when they're flowering the hummingbirds go nuts for them so it's a really great one these look super good and uh, nice patches so always think about having combos of odd numbers they look really beautiful as border plants too so they're super super easy you can get a lot of neat colors grays blues pinks but they love the flowers on the so if they start flowering make sure you leave those flowers on because the hummingbirds will go nuts for these this is a great example of a really beautiful California native that the hummingbirds will really love this is California fuchsia this is not to be confused with the regular fuchsia this one's full Sun low water just like a typical California native so make sure that you're watering it correctly it's kind of opposite of what you think you should be doing with California natives you do not want to water a ton in the summertime because California natives don't get a ton of water in the summertime so you're trying to mimic that more wet uh, winter and spring for them so give them a little bit of extra water there and then you're going to slowly start cutting that off uh, once it starts getting a little bit warmer this one's not currently flowering but that's something you want to think about you want to have things flowering at different times so that way you have the hummingbirds in your garden for a little bit longer they're of course going to be the most active in the spring and summertime but you do want to make sure that you have things Things staged so it's flowering in different times so they will stay in your garden for a little bit longer this one has a really beautiful orange yellow flower uh, that's tubular that typical flower for the hummingbirds and it's a nice spreader so it's a really beautiful plant to add into your garden and a California native also to boot so you can have low water plants in your garden for the hummingbirds as well this one here is pentis this is something that the hummingbirds and the butterflies both really love it's got the tubular flowers comes in a lot of different kinds of colors and stuff as well but it has that kind of helicopter landing pad that I'm always telling you to look for for the butterflies the butterflies like something that's a little bit more on the shallow side they like a cluster of flowers like this and something they can land on easily so I'm going to show you a couple of plants that both the hummingbirds and the butterflies like so you can have a combination of both of those in the gardens nectar for the hummingbirds and nectar for the butterflies this comes in a lot of different colors some varieties get a lot taller than others so make sure you know which one you have so that way when you're planting 
planting it, you're not blocking the plant behind it because you accidentally planted one that gets a little bit too big. So make sure you're always checking those tags and when in doubt, ask us. We will always let you know how big it's gonna get and how to take care of it as well. This one here is Lantana. Lantana is a great one for the hummingbirds and butterflies alike as well. When you look at it again, perfect helicopter landing pad. There is practically a bullseye in the middle of most of these. It comes in a lot of different colors. There's a lot of really nice trailing ones that make good border plants, but some of them will get a little bit taller as well, but not very big. Most of these are pretty small. Super low maintenance, full sun, low water. So it's a really great one to kind of plant and forget. This one is really beautiful in a lot of groupings where you have a lot of impact with the color. So this is a great one to get into your garden for the hummingbirds and the butterflies too. This one is Budleia. They call this butterfly bush. It has a really beautiful flower on it. That perfect little combination of the two things, the tubular flowers and multiple flowers together for the butterflies. It smells heavenly. This is one of my favorite smelling plants. It has almost kind of a bready kind of sweet smell. I always say it kind of reminds me of Hawaiian rolls. It smells really, really beautiful. This one comes in a lot of different varieties. So if you're looking for some height, there's definitely something that can get fairly tall in the garden, almost like a very small tree. There's also teeny tiny ones called microchips and dwarfs that stay really small. Uh, they come in a lot of different colors as well, ranging from whites to pinks to purple. Purples. One of my favorite ones is called Dark Night that has a really deep, deep, dark, dark purple color and it just smells so good, especially on a warm summer day, just walking past them, you can smell them. So it's my favorite in the garden here at Rogers when we have them all together and it's really nice and warm. I can almost smell them from the other side of the garden. It's really an amazing plant and perfect for those butterflies and all those hungry hummingbirds as well. This one here is Agastache. They call this hummingbird mint. This one almost has a kind of a sagey smell when you smell it, I think, hence the mint name on there, but it's not a real mint, so do not eat this one. But the hummingbirds will love to eat this one. Beautiful flowers, they come in oranges as well. I love this like pink, hot pink orange combo. Uh, very, very low water and very easy to take care of. It does experience a little bit of die down, so you'll have to cut it back uh, when it gets cooler, but then it'll flush right back in the spring and especially in the summertime. It's very, very easy, very pretty. Works well with the California natives too because it has kind of similar needs. Full sun will work in a container though too, so it's a really great one to add into the garden to add a little bit of like crazy wild color. It has a little bit of a kind of wild look, sort of similar to the salvias, which I'm gonna show you last, but once you have any of these plants in the gardens, I can guarantee that you will have some humming birds come into your yard. So last but certainly not least, because I think it's on most people's radars for hummingbirds, is salvias. Hummingbirds love, 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 love salvias. And there's so many different kinds of salvias as well. And the hummingbirds like all of them. They don't care which one it is, they love it. I love watching the hummingbirds eat all the salvias because it's really funny when they poke their little beaks into the actual tube of the flower, there's a little stamen piece that comes down and bonks them on top of the head and leaves a little bit of pollen on their head. And you can tell when the hummingbirds have been eating from that because you can only see that telltale sign of that little dot kind of between their eyes near the tip of, or the base of their beak. It's really, really fun to watch them eat from that. And it's really kind of interesting because it really kind of shows you how how Mother Nature has fine-tuned things to help things get pollinated. So they're using the hummingbirds and the hummingbirds are using the flowers and they're working in combination together to get things pollinated and to get some food. So it's a really great plant to have. It comes in a lot of different colors. I love this purple variety here, but you can get it in whites and reds and oranges and purples and pinks and all the different kinds of colors. So there is a salvia that I guarantee will work with your color palette in your garden. So hopefully I showed you a plant that you think will work well in your garden because you can have all different kinds of plants and all different kinds of scenarios for the hummingbirds. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot more plants that the hummingbirds will absolutely love. So if you have questions, you can always put them down below in the comments and we'll answer those for you. Make sure that you're following us on Facebook or on Instagram. We always post a lot of amazing photos of all the different fun things we have going on here at Rogers. There's always something fun and unique here. And a lot of it's super limited edition. So you want to know about it before 
before it's gone. We also have a really fantastic email list that you can be on. We send out beautiful emails to you with all kinds of great information, videos, photos as well, recipes, events that we have going on here at Rogers because there's always something happening here. So thank you so much for tuning in. Again, add those questions down below. If you have any questions for us about the hummingbirds or hummingbird gardens, we have all kinds of fun things like the Audubon Society here talking about them as well, depending on the time of year. Um, and be well, be safe, and happy gardening. Bye.